TSB Talksport Business on Talk at 100.3 Lachlan Kitchen and Neil Lodger here. 0586 is the number. And we know, Neil, on the show that uh, everyone has a nickname. Uh, you got the nickname Sweets because of your love of chocolates. Uh, Pranav has the nickname uh, Freebies because of his love of free stuff. And I think that our uh, intern, Arjun, should really have the nickname Speedy uh, because <laughs> he has just uh, a love and a passion for F1 that uh, the fact that he gets to come in here and talk about F1, it's it's just like a kid before his birthday. He's just overwhelmed with excitement and passion to talk about the race. I'm so glad that it didn't name him Speedos. That would have been visually disturbing. Oh, oh the my speedies. God. Oh my the God. Speedos? No, no, no. Well, it, it, it might have come out eventually. Nicknames <laughs> tend to have a habit of evolving. But Speedy, what happened in last night's uh, Singapore F1? A crazy race in short. See, you didn't even laugh at the joke. Straight into the F1. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, anyway. That's anyway, so just want to talk about the race. Love. What happened on the race? <laughs> so, uh, this is the first race which has got an hour delay. Okay, mm-hmm. so it was supposed to start at 4 o'clock, UA time, but it ended up happening at 5 o'clock because of heavy rains in Singapore. So, of course, there was a lot of issues there, and then to see, to witness all this, we had the Formula One, um, say, champion, Felipe Massa there, uh, seeing everything around, and then he was like, oh, you know what? Every team must go for getting into something called as the wet tyres. That means tyres which have got grooves, Okay, those are called wet And tires. they use them in the wet. Yes. Look at that. Simple. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, okay. So, uh, so again, all this thing started and say, by the first lap, everyone all set and all cool, lights out, and then we are seeing some kind of an issue with Charles Leclerc of Ferrari. He didn't have a good launch, whereas his teammate Carlos Sainz had and had a contact with Lewis Hamilton. Ooh, and that's not good, is it? That's not good, but then, thank God, Hamilton didn't end up getting any kind of severe damage. Okay. And going all across, we are seeing the first retirement of Joe Guan Yu. He came in contact with Nicholas Latifi, a.k.a. Gotifi, which is got on Twitter now. Um, and say because of that one, both of them hit into the barriers. One ended up in the escape road, and they couldn't drive. And the second retirement was Fernando Alonso. It was his 350th race start. And he still had to retire. He still had to retire. As in, it was a fantastic drive by him. He was, say, defending mm-hmm. his position over the current race champion, Max Verstappen, for around 21 laps. It was incredible. Here were uh, some of the highlights of, yes. of the Singapore Grand Prix. It's lights out and away we go. Leclerc and Perez get away well. Hamilton behind Leclerc wanting to get on with it as is Pierre Gasly in the Alpha Tauri and Sergio Perez leads them into the first corner as he did in Baku. Happens getting his elbows out and I think he might have made contact with the back of Lance Stroll's Aston Martin and once again losing more places. That's Danny Ricciardo making his way past Max Verstappen. Verstappen on the inside will now try and get that place back again and he does. Oh, and that's Lewis Hamilton going straight on. Hamilton, frustrated behind Carlos Sainz, has gone straight on and has hit the barrier. Down at turn seven. Norris and Verstappen coming to the scene of the accident. Hamilton rejoins the track. Norris goes through. Hamilton rejoins the race ahead of Max Verstappen. Uh, Behind Ricardo, Stroll, Vettel, Hamilton and Gasly complete the top ten. There goes Max Verstappen locking up his brakes and Max Verstappen goes straight on. Manages to stop in time, spins the car around 180 degrees and rejoins the race. Verstappen went for it, but were those tyres and brakes too cold to make such a bold move? It's going to be maximum points for Sergio Perez, who on the streets of Singapore wins the 2022 Singapore Grand Prix. Yeah, so that was the uh, the end result, and uh, I, I guess the fans have been waiting out in the rain for a long time. I even had friends there; they were they were saying, "I can't believe I'm out in the rain watching TLC," <laughs> 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 which they were the night before, going things I never thought I'd say I would do. <laughs> of course, and to be honest, people as in drivers who are driving in, mm-hmm. as in for them, grip was everything. So. In a couple of places we have heard Max Verstappen running off the track, Lewis Hamilton driving off the track, as in all of these amazing overtakes, which should have been perfect and smooth overtakes, ended up being into, say, track overruns. 
And uh, Arjun, does that make it better when it's more rain on the track? Is is it a bit like a, a lot of codes of sport? It's going to be more slippery. You know, there's going to be more excitement. Exactly. So in Formula One, it's a little different. So say if you're on the lead, you're having no interruptions. Whereas if you're on behind, since these cars create a good amount of spray, mm -hmm. so the helmet ends up completely drenched in water that say you might not end up seeing. Like that, we saw the accident of say, Joe Guan Yu and Nicholas Latifi, because for him, the visibility was not so great that he ended up touching the other dude and then ended up crashing. Now, now what, did the, what did the drivers say? What was their reaction at the end of the Grand Prix? So, again, the podium was by Sergio Perez, another Red Bull, and I was really happy to see him, because for a change, Max Verstappen was P7. So it is Sergio Perez P1, Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz P2 and P3 from the Ferrari respectively. Okay, so P3 means they came third. Yes. All right, just P for those that are playing along at home. Exactly. P basically means position. Okay, well, here was the driver reaction from the Singapore Grand Prix. Every win is special, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the type of guy that it's always working under the radar. I'm, I'm not uh, making big noises out there. I knew I was going through a bit of a bad patch. Uh, there's been two races that I haven't been on the podium. But obviously, the media makes a big thing, you know, probably because I'm a Mexican and uh, they start to make all this comparison on, on the biggest mistake Red Bull has made to brought me here. So I'm super happy, you know. First of all, I think with, with Red Bull, it seems that we have the upper hand in the first few laps and then they seem to, uh, I don't know, they struggle a little bit with Wamba, but then once they put the tires in the window, they are very strong. So, uh, uh, but then uh, at the end of the race, it wasn't that representative. I was pushing until the gap was like 5.1 seconds and then when I knew that it was 5.1 um, I just kind of bring the car home so uh, the pace wasn't that representative at the end. That first thing on the intermediate I lost the I lost the front tires very quickly and since then I couldn't push and I was struggling a lot with the with the car rotation didn't find really the the grip and I wanted to go into the slick as soon as possible you know to, to try and recover the pace but uh, yeah, um, towards the end of the race, I managed to recover the pace, but it was a bit too late. So that was the reaction from uh, the, the Grand Prix in Singapore over the weekend. Uh, you're on TSB. I should just uh, I recount that joke. Uh, I was saying how one of my friends in Singapore, Kinsey, uh, went out into the rain on Saturday night to watch a band called TLC. Oh, okay. Because when I said, oh, my friend Kinsey said he was out in the rain having to watch TLC, what, something he never thought he'd do it in his life. You thought that was a TV show, did yeah, you? Yeah, because I mean, exactly. see, this is a television channel, right? Right, oh. DLC, where they show you know going out in the wild cooking in in the farm and it's raining and they're trying to take cover and and, and still trying to you know do something out of the day that they uh, that they can no TLC was a pop group they had a big song called waterfalls in the 1990s no you haven't heard of no, it no, no. no really no one's no. Yeah, I can't believe you haven't heard of this one no. number no. one single I, I, can't, I can't believe that joke got a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> See, I mean, the t TLC, TLC evoked a different emotion for me and I was like, oh, that, that show, I can imagine how people are trying to say that. Well, there's only two of them left now. That was the funny okay. thing. One of them so, passed away. Oh, so only so, TLC and... Uh, uh, I think it's only... Yeah, T and C and C, L passed away. Wow, so it's TC. Yeah, it's TC right now. Yeah, so, anyways. Let's continue on, Speedy. <laughs> okay, so this is also one of the only Formula One Grand Prix which have got three safety cars. Wow. Okay, we have not seen three in a race. Yes. Okay, and supposed to go for 61 laps, but then again, due to all the delays and safety cars, they couldn't complete the entire laps. So they ended up in 58 laps, and then they stopped. So at a point, say 30 minutes remaining, they ended up, instead of putting the number of laps, they ended up putting the amount of time left. Time. So, we were, so at first I'm like, okay, well, how much laps are these? But then again, looking into that later on, I was like, okay, this is just like this much laps. Now, what did Christian Honer say after the race? So, Christian Honer is fine. For him, like, okay, if Max wins, he will sit and say rumble around. But then for him, with Checo winning his fourth career win in Formula 1, this is his fourth winner, because before it was before he won in Paul Ricard and Monaco, okay, so this year. So, for him, this was like a fantastic one. And see, again... For Red Bull, the thing is that maximum points. So he got the maximum points. And let's listen to what Christian Horner had to say. 
this team is a phenomenal team. It's the best team in the pit lane. And as see here, it's all the men and women back in Milton Keynes that you know, have worked tirelessly and are doing a wonderful, wonderful job. And, uh, you know, we're incredibly proud of everything that's being achieved. And this year could well be you know, our best ever year in Formula One. Yeah, it could possibly be. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. So for them right now, <laughs> for them definitely right now, they are... Officially, I can tell officially they are the championship winners. Now, uh, I, I think I'm the only one in the studio that hasn't seen Drive to Survive, the TV show oh, on you Netflix. you must watch it. About oh, the kids, please. You should watch it. Uh, and uh, t- is Toto Wolf in that show? Is oh, he, he is he feature? Everyone, oh, okay. everyone. You'll, you, well, as in you'll get to know all these names. Well, because I, he came up on the big screen mm-hmm. and I was like, you know, if I was a 45-year-old divorcee wife, he'd be a good-looking rooster. Oh, he, he <laughs> is a... He, I, I tell you that. He, you know, he drives and what he wears, yeah, his house... He, Oof, okay. Absolute top notch. So he's the, he's the principal of the Mercedes AMG F1 side, and every time he came on, they kept putting him on camera. And I'm like, you know, of all the team principals, I can see why the director's picking Toto Wolf to be on camera. Yeah, not not no. just that, you know, because <laughs> of the things that he says, you know, he's absolutely right in your face, arrogant. And I, I, I like that about him. Yeah. When you are powerful, you have the right to be arrogant. So it's the real alpha male of. Yes. Exactly. So say, come on, he is the team principal of one of the most powerful teams in Formula One. Yeah, he's got an, an eight-time world time world championship uh, constructor. Yeah, in Western culture, he's named after a dog from a kids' movie, Toto, Toto. from the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Probably that's why he wanted to become bigger and silly. I'm that's not it. just a dog. He worked on his weaknesses. Did yeah. Yeah, but anyways, coming back in Singapore, this was not. It was not only about the race. It was also about the budget. Mm-hmm. Okay. So according to Formula One, Formula One allows each team for this particular year alone to have a budget of one hundred and forty-five million dollars. Okay. So this was increased later on, consider, considering uh, Christian Horner crying to say, saying that, okay, if you don't increase, we're not going to race. I understand this. Okay. So now, again, reports have come up saying that Red Bull has has upped their, as in they have crossed the budget cap and they have reached to a level which is heavily unacceptable. Okay. So now for this one, FIA, as in who is the regulatory body, who controls all the things with Formula One came up with a particular action. So, in they find that okay, uh, there has been a breach. They have considered they've made it into two categories: a major breach and a minor breach. Okay. Okay. So, if it's a major breach, the issue what's going to come up is they're going to have a deduction of drivers and constructors' championship points. Okay. They're going to be suspended from one or more stages of the competition. Is this coming to effect for the next race in Japan? Yes. Yeah, so this particular budget cap regulation is going to be released out next week. Okay. Okay. So the so this week they're doing doing all the audits, and then finally they're going to come up with the result of it. So again, uh, coming down to what is going to be the consequences, there's going to be a suspension from an entire competition. So say one race can can actually result say in around. 45 to 50 points per team. Okay, so if Red Bull gets penalized for this, they're going to get a reduction in points. This all sounds very technical to me. No, no, I'm going I'm going to simplify this easier. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So suppose in Formula 1 everything works on points. Right. Okay. So you race for the point. Yeah. Okay. So who gets the maximum point will win the championship. So there are two championships. We got a drivers championship. Yeah, and then, and then and the manufacturer. Yeah, we got constructors. We, we got to wrap it up by seven here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make this fast. I'm gonna make this fast. Okay. okay. So, uh, so each team has to follow a particular budget cap because they want to make it a level field for e- every sense. team. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. at a point, because the, before and all, we used to see Mercedes spending around five hundred million dollars. Okay, for doing an entire development. And that was just Toto on his Botox, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, come on. Winning eight times driver's championship, sorry, constructor's championship has a cost coming to it. Okay. But then again, this thing came up and everyone unanimously voted for it and everyone is cool. But problem right now is that Toto Wilf of Mercedes and Mattia Benotto from Ferrari has come up, has tied up together and is like, you know what? We got this and we got to do something on Red Bull. All right. Okay. So in Toto Wolf's case, he's now, he has said what all he has done. 
It's like, I don't use new parts. I use old parts. I say I had to uh, make you know, 40 people redundant listen, of their jobs. When, when we said you were coming in for a five-minute segment... <laughs> The See, there, there is a lot of action happening in Formula One. I know. 